what happens when humans take from the ground without a care in the world. Mining has one of the worst impacts on the natural environment, yet the minerals underground are necessary for modern society. But it comes at a cost. Historical mining in the developed nations has left a devastating and lasting impact where toxic chemicals are left to leach into our water supply. People are not aware of the impacts mining has on the environment and public health. And as a result, we don't take the appropriate actions to fix these issues. Do you guys teach about acid mine drainage and stuff like that in schools, or is that a new thing that was brought up through this project? That was new. They just don't teach you this in school. Well, fear no longer. A crack unit of students from the Colorado School of Mines is here to help. April, Cassidy, Dawn, and Kieran have been studying this issue for at least a month. We gave the students at the high school, the Collegiate Academy of Colorado, the knowledge and power to combat this issue in only two short class periods, teaching them the tools used in addressing the hazards of mine runoff and remediation. But first, what is geophysics? Good God. None of the students knew what it was either, until we showed them our four scientific methods used to understand this issue in a pre-class video. Geophysics has two main parts, geo and physics. So geo meaning earth and rocks, and physics being the study of systems and how they interact. So we're exploring the interior of the earth using non-invasive sensing methods, which my teammates will talk to you about now. Welcome to electrical resistivity. When we take an electrical resistivity survey, it's basically just telling us what the approximate apparent resistivity is. So we can equate that to the resistivity of the material underground. All right, let's talk about seismic. Seismic is basically like sending sound waves into the ground and listening for what comes back. GPR is ground penetrating radar. So like seismic, it uses waves, but instead of using waves like Kieran explained where it's like talking to someone, these uses light waves. So all of these different methods that you just learned about can be used to study many different things around the Earth and other planets, including hazards like earthquakes and landslides. And then in our specific case study that we'll talk about in class on Monday, which will be about mining in Colorado. Do you now know what geophysics is? Well, let's begin with our case study. Our lesson plan was used to bridge the gap between high school physics and geophysics. Using the Landsat missions, we presented to the class our findings and the basics of satellite remote sensing, how we can actually map the extent of mine drainage in many parts of Colorado using hyperspectral imaging. We hopefully motivated these students and expanded their knowledge and interest in mine remediation and geoscience. We move on to the Discovery Lab. The class got to test out all our fancy equipment moving from station to station and analyzing the data gathered earlier that morning while filling out a lab worksheet. So what did the students, our main stakeholders, think of the whole thing? And who is the teacher? Hi, I'm Alana Cohen. I am a physics and chemistry and also astronomy teacher here at Collegiate Academy. How did you see what we taught fit into the curriculum that you're teaching? I thought it fit in perfectly because you guys covered the electrical resistivity tester, which was directly related to um, the direct current stuff that we did. I mean, I think that what's taught in school should probably be made as relevant as possible, and it seemed like really relevant. What applications of geophysics do you think your students would be the most interested to hear like more about? I think they really enjoyed looking at the data for the electrical resistivity. If you were to change what we taught about, how would you change it? It definitely did not suck. I mean, I guess I wish I had taught waves before you guys came. Mm -hmm. I think it also might have been good if we could have done like some more specific data analysis and like done more of like a lab write-up. Mrs. Cohen expressed interest in working with Mines Geoscience students in the future. Since then, we've worked with her to improve upon the lesson materials, to include more hands-on activities and more data analysis. She wants to keep her class involved and interested in humanitarian geoscience, work, and projects. I'm hoping that, like, 
we can all keep in touch so I can integrate some of the stuff like into future topics that I teach. These are the criteria we use in class to critique the effectiveness of a humanitarian project. These are the completion of deliverables, timeliness, stakeholder communication, community involvement, sustainability, responsibility, economics, and ethics, giving an overall weighting of 5.77 out of 7. Thank you for being here. I thought you guys all did a wonderful job and it's been a pleasure getting to know you. It almost makes me want to go teach college. Hey, guys, cut it out. <laughs>